It's been more than 30 years since rock and roll legend Roy Orbison died. I traveled all the way to Wink and learned a lot about Roy from people there, including my new friend, Helen Boyle. So sweet. Here's the story. A lot of laughs <laughs> and a sense of closeness. Everybody called everybody mom and dad. <laughs> it's how the happily married couple, Helen and Billy Voyles, describe the town of Wink with a population of about 1,000 people. In other words, everyone basically knows everyone. They Everybody pulls together, and that makes me proud of this community. Wink is a city in Winkler County. It's small, but it's a stop for country music fans, and Helen, who has lived there all her life, has a connection to the legend that has helped put Wink on the map. He and I were just friends, and uh, he didn't have a date, and uh, last minute he says, Let's, uh, and I said, I'll go. She's talking about the old pretty woman singer and rock and roll star, Roy Orbison, who lived in Wink for part of his childhood and young adult life. Even though there's not an actual picture of the two together, Helen says the pair went to prom as friends in the 1950s. Told him when we was dancing, I said, Roy, it'd be much better if you was up there playing. <laughs> and it would have been. <laughs> In high school, Roy had formed a band with a group of friends called the Wink Westerners, and later they changed their name to the Teen Kings. He and the Teen Kings had a program on Saturday afternoon, every Saturday at 4.30, but I don't know which channel it was on at that time. Well, we may have an answer for that. In the 1950s, the Teen Kings performed for more than a year on a show right here on KMID, which is now commonly called ABC Big Two. It wasn't until the 1960s that his career took off and his classic Oh Pretty Woman song became a hit. He rocked black hair, dark clothes, and his signature piece, the dark glasses. Helen did mention that Roy had really bad eyesight as a kid. The iconic sunglasses, the stories vary just a tiny bit. One is that he left the glasses on a plane over in England. They're handcrafted. He couldn't get another pair made, so he started using the sunglasses. We paid a visit to Barbara Sabonia, who has volunteered at the Roy Orbison Museum in Wink for more than 10 years. And of course, we got to see the museum's most treasured piece donated by the Orbison family themselves, Roy's dark glasses. And the first thing that surprised me when I saw them is the color. They're not dark black like they look in all the pictures. The museum opened in 1989, and people from all over the world flocked to this place for a moment to go back in time. Uh, okay, sit. Almost every little thing in here has been donated. From Roy's birth certificate. Here's a copy of his birth certificate. School yearbooks. And he did the drawings in here to even a movie poster. That's right. Many people don't know Roy starred in a movie called The Fastest Guitar Alive. But it wasn't always a happy time for Roy. He experienced overwhelming loss in his life. His home in Nashville burnt and he had two sons to drown. And he lost his wife on a motorcycle accident. And uh, it just, it was, it was sad. In the middle here, uh, they're over in England, Roy and his wife Claudette. After losing his first wife Claudette in 1966, and two years later, his two sons, Roy remarried a few years after. Helen says till this day, she doesn't know how he kept going after such loss, but he continued to perform for decades. What made uh, Roy so different, you know, for the people here in town and as an artist? Well, uh, Roy, Roy was a very quiet uh, person and, and all, you never saw him just really doing anything outrageous, anything like some kids will. We asked Helen if she could tell Roy anything now. What would it be? What, what I'd tell Roy, how proud I was of him and proud that he made it. Yeah. So sweet. Now, Barbara, the volunteer at the museum, tells us that the city of Wink owns the building the museum is in. And since only volunteers run the place, she says people have to call in advance to visit. It's free to get in, but monetary donations are always accepted. To learn more, if you plan on visiting this jewel of a museum, you have to go. Visit yourbasin.com.